All right, well, good morning and welcome to Break It With The Guy Who Sews. This is Sean with The Guy Who Sews, obviously. And I have my very special guest today. It is Susan from The Hot Mess Quilter. And I just absolutely love your channel name. It was funny the other week, um, I was talking about, I was having a bad day on the live, making all sorts of crazy messes. And I was like, I need to call myself The Hot Mess Quilter. And then I realized, you know what? That tech name's already been taken and I need to have her on my channel. And here she is. So, um, so I am, I so am. Great have a hot mess thanks for having me this is fun oh, oh absolutely yeah it's been um really good to have you um so we'll just have everyone come across to this link because youtube is always or zoom is always mean to me and makes me do things the hard way so <laughs> well my laptop is making me do things the hard way so it happens hey and then yesterday being friday the 13th it was just um an absolute mess mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's how it was in your part of the world, but. <clears throat> well, they did a big lottery drawing in our state. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know who won, but it was a big one. And they said that six people have won huge lottery winnings on Friday the 13th. So maybe it maybe it's not all bad. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy for them. Gosh, I hope they did. Wouldn't that be incredible? Yeah. I didn't buy a ticket. I figured with, you know, a chance of being, is it like that? Mega millions or Powerball, whatever it was. Or billion or something crazy. You'd walk out with like almost 800 million cash out. Yeah. I mean, uh, why didn't I buy a ticket? But I didn't. Yeah, but uh, uh, 302 million to one. I mean, I think they say you're more likely to get struck by lightning behind <laughs> the buy a ticket. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy for the people at one and I hope the money you know, treats them well and it blesses them and, you know, that sort of thing there. But I, you, I know the only way I'm ever going to get to riches is by, you know, working my tail off. So, um, yeah, yeah I agree. it is. It is. So would you like to tell us, I mean, everyone's hopping in. Uh, okay. Um, Sean, the Molly designer saying 1.3 billion, one winner. So, um, yeah, that's awesome. So did one win? Apparently one winner. So, um, yeah, but Let's talk about you for a little bit. Um, I'd love for you to tell the viewers who you are, where you have um, your content, and just about your channel and everything else, because we okay. love the name, The Hot Mess Quilter, and okay. we just like to learn a little bit more about you. Of course. Well, my name is Susan, and I live in Kansas City, Missouri. I am, by trade, a registered nurse. I do cardiac stress testing. I've been a nurse th for 30 years. I know... I know it's hard to believe when I'm only 29, but it, it is what it is. <laughs> um, I started quilting about three and a half years ago. It started because, well, my grandmother was a quilter. My cousins are quilters. I just never had the bug to do it. I've always done all kinds of other crafting and I did photography for a long time. So the creative side has always been a huge part of my life, but just, I always thought that was for old ladies. And a friend of mine that I worked with was making these adorable quilts with her granddaughters. And I thought, if those kids can do this, maybe this is something I can do. So I said, Michelle, could you help me? Can you just show me what to do? She brought over a sewing machine, a cutting board, a rotary cutter. She brought over a ruler and a mat and some fat quarters and showed me how to make two or three different basic designs. And then with the power of YouTube, I was able really to teach myself everything else. Um, once I, and I'm not one of those particular piecers, like I'm not, you know, I just am always up to try new and pretty things. And then I kind of fell in love with free motion quilting. And so that's where things really took off for me. Um, I like to sketch and draw, and that was just kind of an extension of that. And um, so I've been trying to build that up. I don't have a long arm. I'm afraid to bite the bullet on that piece. But anyway, that's where I am. My channel just kind of came about because of the type of sewing machine that I use on a quilting frame. I use a Baby Lock Jazz 2, and they have lots of little finicky problems. So I'm on a Facebook group with those people, and I thought, if they're having issues, maybe we should make some videos. So that's kind of where the channel started from. Um, and so I also have a Facebook page and Instagram. You can just find me at Hot Mess Quilter, and I am a hot mess. I'm not consistent 
and I, I'm not good like you, Sean, where I pop on every week, but you know, life, but it, it, it's fun. It's just something fun. And I love following everyone and seeing what people are doing and, and being, um, inspired by everyone's creativity. We have some great people. This is a neat community. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Like that's one of the things that was unexpected for me is like the friendships and just the inspiration and everything else. I mean, I kind of started my channel myself. Um, like it's funny that you said, you know, that I do stuff every week. Um, I watched a lot of the knitting podcasts and that sort of thing that my wife watches, you know, she had them on TV, I watched it in the background and these people were getting stuff done. And I'm like, do I need to start a channel to get stuff done? And so <laughs> I was like, well, we'll, we'll try it. And yeah, it's nice because you have all these people coming to watch every week and they want to see something. So I've, I've got to do something every week. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a great motivator. Yeah. So how many work in progress do you have? Like your own personal projects? How, what, how many of those have you got going right now at the start of the new year? How many do I have? Or how many have I started? Cause that's two different answers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> t-shirt quilts that i need to start um i have the wizard of oz i have the mythical dark since the uh the hunter star there's like two others yeah this yeah, it's probably about eight yeah yeah i have a quilt that i started about a year and a half ago um it's a missouri star quilt company pattern called pop stars and it's just, um, it's basically just small eight inch blocks, but every, every time I have a few extra months, I'll throw a block together. It's probably going to take me a decade to get it enough blocks to put it all together, but that's okay. It's not anything major. What's on my plate right now are dog bandanas of all things. Hmm, okay. So, my sewing room is a wreck. I left it real for everyone. This is how I, I mean, it's crazy in here. And so, yes, I am making dog bandanas. Let me grab one. Um, I have a girl in my neighborhood who does artisan doggy ice cream and she is putting together like a bark box and she has dog bandanas. And I was looking at the price of those dog bandanas and I thought I can make these. So this is what we're making. They come in all different sizes. And what's great about them is they have snaps. Oh, so nice. you adjust it and they're two-sided, double-sided. So I'm using up all my great scraps this way. And it's actually kind of fun. It's just a nice little break to get away from, um, you know, my quilting projects just for a little bit. But yeah, I think once you start sewing, uh, an entire world of creativity opens up for you. Oh, absolutely. There's, yeah, there's so many different things. So like you were doing that dress with- um, Anna, yeah. Yeah, Anna. Yeah, so I was like, I've never tried anything like that. So maybe that's going to be next on my plate. I don't know. It's fun. It's fun. And I mean, you could easily do that. You know, if you know how to do it, it's quarter inch seam, you can make that dress. Like I was, I was absolutely terrified. Um, but Donna's like, you can do it. You can do it. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll try. If it's a spectacular failure, you know, at least we'll have a couple of giggles and laughs. At the, in the, um, <laughs> hey, Donna, you see me in Homec in uh, 1983. You wouldn't ask me to make a dress. <laughs> My my time at home ec was an absolute disaster too. So um, <laughs> don't don't worry about that. But I'll, yeah. I'm going to go through real quick and say good morning <laughs> or good evening to everybody, depending on which part of the world they're in. Hey, um, so yeah, because we do have someone here, at least one person here from Australia, where it's very very late. Um, good morning to Nelly Franco from New York City, Sean from the Mall of the down in Florida, I believe. Courtney from Pieces Love and Quilting. Uh, Heather from the Deputy Quilter is here. Good evening, Janet. She's from Western Australia. So you, you're actually oh. getting watched um, all around the world right now. Oh, um, uh, so and Quilt with April Sortell is here and she'll be on the channel, I believe, in two weeks if my um, memory serves me correctly, which is never um, super reliable. Uh, Lynn Bylas, good morning. Leslie G. Uh, let's see if I have Joyce Baker and Martha's Creative Life who will be joining me here next week. Um, is here as well. And if I missed anybody, I apologize. Uh, oh, Chloe Morgan is here. Uh, Doreen is here. Um, we got a nice little crowd here this morning. So um, oh, we, do, we do have a question. Um, and then we're going to move into the quilt show portion because um, Susan has brought along some of her quilts from that you made and also your grandmother, correct? I, I, none that I made. These are all my grandmother's 
quilt collection of part of my collection, but nothing that I've made. But no, yeah. Hey, we love seeing quilts. It doesn't matter if you made it, grandma made it, the, you know, the lady down the street, it doesn't matter to us. You know, we just right. love seeing beautiful quilts. I showed you um, dog. That's close enough, right? <laughs> absolutely. And do you have a patent for that um, dog bandana? I do not. So what I did is um, there are lots of free patterns, but this particular one, I just bought a bandana and literally traced the pattern out for it. And it, it's multiple sizes. So I just kind of added on the sizes. If I can find a pattern link, I can add it in the show notes when we're done, if that's okay. Absolutely. Go for it. I mean, because I, I, there's people asking about it. Yeah. And I love the snaps. Um, because I actually have one of those little um, snap kits. I bought that. Uh, I can't remember why, but we decided to buy one. It's nice to have. They're about $20 for the whole kit. Yeah. And yeah. they They're come fantastic. in handy. Like Becca was on last night live and she was using it. And she, like she said, you know, there's probably enough snaps here to last her, you know, 10 years, which is totally true. But yeah, yeah. if you ever need snaps, just buy the kit. It's yeah. not expensive. And then at least that way you have it. And you'll, you'll probably find that you'll have millions of projects that you come across and go, oh, I've got yeah. that stuff. Now I can do it. So bags, um, bags. there's so many things you can use that for. But yeah, the snaps make it, I think, just ups the game a little bit. Oh, absolutely. Um, OK, so apparently the winner of the lottery was in Maine, but it wasn't April Sawtell, unfortunately. Um, OK, <laughs> so the question we have here is from Courtney at Pieces Love and Quilting, and she wants to know what is your favorite thing uh, what is your favorite sewing notion that you like to use? Oh, other than my seam ripper? <laughs> See, I knew, we, I knew we got along well for a reason. <laughs> my favorite sewing notion is actually, and I'll show you, is my, I love this thing where I can just stick all my little tools on there. It's called, it's, let me get my glasses because I literally can see nothing. It's so Emma. And it's just a little divider that you um. can pins oh like all your, I love this thing and it kind of gives me a sense of being organized when I'm really not but I do want to show something else so I have a great nephew he's 11 he has a 3d printer so he made me um he, it's just so, he's so cute and so clever this is a scissor holder and I'm going to mount it on the side of my sewing machine so when I'm snipping or bearing threads this will be so handy to have right there. But I thought, what a cool thing for a kid to do is his mom sews. So, you know, this is an, a really fun project for him to do. So I have that. That's probably going to be one of my new sewing ones too. And then how you, do you plan to attach that with like double-sided tape or? Actually, it's what I'm going to use. That way I can take it off if I'm boxing up the machine or moving it or taking it to be repaired or something. And so I think uh, I'll just Velcro it on there. Okay. Awesome. The only reason I was asking is I was thinking if you had a plan on doing magnetic for whatever reason, you have to be careful of those computerized machines, but yeah, yeah Velcro would be yeah. um, a neat idea. So I think that'll work out nicely. Um, yeah. My, this is my um, thing that I use. It's a cup and the reason I use this is it's um, when I did my half marathon like nine years ago and then Finley chewed the heck out of it. Love that. Yes. Yes. That's what they do. Oh, well, see, yeah. you're she fancy. Chewed it, and then I figured, well, I don't want to throw it out. So I just put my pens in. Um, my favorite um, sewing tool, which is no surprise to anybody that's watched the channel more than 10 minutes. <laughs> seam ripper. I know. I have this one. I'll show you mine. Um, this, where's the other end? So this is the seam fix, but this is rubberized. So mm -hmm. you use part to actually get all the little bitty threads off of your material. It kind of helps. So when you're snipping or ripping seams and you have all those little, you know, threads. So this is my favorite seam ripper and it's a nice ergonomic design too. So yeah. the older we get, the harder it is to grip things. Finding. Work, work smarter, not harder, right? Although I'm only 29, I shouldn't have that issue. Yeah, but you're not 25 anymore. So, you know, once you hit, go past 25, that's when you can start saying that, you know, you have the old um, <laughs> age related stuff. Um, state of mind. It's a state of mind. Yeah, Heather said adult, the debt free quilter says a command strip would work well too. It comes off easier than Velcro. That's the other true. thing, 
yeah, there is two different types of Velcro that I've discovered too. There's that normal stuff that we're seeing like from the 70s and 80s. And now there's a, um, I don't, don't think I have any handy, but it's a different type of Velcro. And I think that one would work really nice. They sell it at Joanne um, at least at by the yard, or you can buy the little packages of it. But yeah, it's the one that's not quite so hairy, I guess you can call it. Okay, yeah, I'll have to look. I know that also they have the dots, the little Velcro dots. That's what I was thinking. But a command strip would work too. That's a good point. Yeah. Thanks for the tips. Oh, absolutely. And I, and I love the tips that the viewers put in because they come up with some really, really neat ideas as well. Girl. So, yeah, um, yeah, it looks like Courtney says, I recently bought a 3D print holder that holds my USB. Maybe a great nephew can make someone sell them and she would be interested in buying whatever it creates. So, yeah, that might be a business opportunity for him. You know, if he comes up with some neat sewing stuff, you know, you know, maybe that might be a good opportunity yeah. for him. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, Heather says she's too cheap to buy the kit, so I got the super cheap one where you use a hammer and the metal snaps. Hey, you you do whatever it, works for you. That's right. That's um, right. It, okay. There's things I'm right. cheap about, and then there's things I just want the convenience of it. But I wanted these plastic snaps for the dog bandanas. For yeah. sure. And Absolutely. they to them. All right. So let's now move on to um, our show and tell. Okay. Do it. And I already did all my show and tell earlier this week. So if you missed my show and tell, you know, you can always go check out that video later on. Um, that was a lot of fun to go back and see um, all the quilts, all the quilt tops. You know, I consider them quilts, even not, not completed yet. But um Susan has brought along, I believe, five quilts that her grandmother had made. And so we thought it'd be really fun to come on and just have a chat and then show off these quilts. Because, you know, I always love seeing other quilts and getting inspiration and that sort of thing there as well. So do you want to show us the first one? And if there's a story behind it, let me know about that as well. Okay. Well, so I, I'm going to start out by showing you a picture of my sweet grandma. So, oh, there. This is my grandma. Her name was Lena Swearingen Stevens. And she uh quilted in her entire life like first out of necessity you know how things were way way back in the day they quilted from necessity and then she became a true quilt artist she hand pieced everything and I remember as a kid going over there and they still did quilting bees you know where all the girls came over and quilted the quilts on the frame um after she passed away she had a few quilt tops left that my mother took to a long armor and we were able to finish them, but everything is hand pieced and really it's a treasure. I'm so blessed to have these fantastic quality quilts. If you've been uh, on my channel and watched me free motion quilt, there's a quilt that I have hanging on the wall behind me. That was hers. It's kind of tattered and a mess. So, you know, I just use it as a great backdrop, but the ones I brought today are in really nice condition. So let me just grab them. And I don't know how far apart do I need. Let's just scoot back a little bit here. Just so do the best you can. I mean, it's, it's hard to um, show a quilt on the video. It in its is. entirety. Oh, that's okay. beautiful. And probably everyone recognizes this. This is the Dresden pattern. My grandmother was a scrappy quilter primarily. So let me kind of get in here a little bit closer. So she did it with intention though. She used scrappy things, but she definitely was intentional about it. So each one, oh, my dog is looking at me, maybe a little bit different. So this is, um, I think it's a full size and she did a beautiful scalloped edge. So this one is hand pieced and it is hand quilted. I don't know. This is really hard to see on that, but it is hand quilted. I've used this on my bed a little bit, um, but then, and then I kind of started, was afraid to use it on my bed. I don't know why. So now I have them displayed on a quilt ladder and rotate quilts through, but there's something super nostalgic and comforting about using your grandma's quilt. I don't know. So yeah, this is the Dresden pattern. Has anyone ever made one of these? No, but I, now I kind of want to. Well, I got a bunch of free material from a woman who passed away. Her son's like, I don't know what to do with this. They brought over four totes of material and it all smelled like cigarette smoke, unfortunately. So I had to wash everything, 
but there's a stack of these Dresden plates that I don't know if I have the skill level to do that. So I'm not really sure. This is applique on. Okay, I've um, got to ask that question. Mm -hmm. It's applique on, and you can see she's even applique along the little scalloped edge. But I don't know. I really like it. I think I might take the pieces that I have and do maybe a pillow or something less intimidating. But if anyone's ever done a dress and quilt, any tips or hints would be great. And that's one of the things I want to do soon is do some tutorials on applique. I've talked about it a few yeah. times. Applique, once you get going and you kind of get the, um, the feel for it, is not as hard as you think it is. Like it, I, it looks, it looks terrifying. If you can free motion quilt, I can guarantee you with a bit of practice, you'll be an expert applique in no time. Um, the quilt behind me, the ice cream quilt, that is all applique, all the ice creams. Use to applique. Sorry? What stitch did you use? What do you I just, use? I just went simple and used a zigzag. There's all sorts <laughs> of stitches that you can do. Um, I played around with mine and I just found the stitch length and the width that I thought was appropriate. Um, and that's just kind of, you know, the, the width I change based on how wide the fabric is, but the stitch length I kind of keep the same yeah. all the time. I think I use about point, point 0.5 millimeters. I think okay. that kind of works well for me. But yeah, just <clears throat> when it comes to applique, just get some practice pieces, just sit there and play your stitch length and width. It might change based on your machine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just, yeah, find what's, you know, if it's too narrow, it's, and, it's yeah, it's not gonna be kind to you. If it's too long, it's gonna be weird. Um, well, this and then you all hand stitch. I wish I could sh get a good enough picture. I mean, the stitches are are so unbelievably tiny. There's no way you can see them. They're so yeah. tiny, so precise. Now, as my grandmother got older, she was a diabetic. Her vision became so poor. So I knew the quilt tops that she had pieced after that because the stitches weren't so perfect and precise as her vision was changing. She's right. been on, I was nine when she passed away. So most of these quilts are probably 50 years ish around that time frame. So yeah, they're none of them super recent. Okay. Quilt number two. Now this is a star. I think it's just a scrappy star. If someone happens to know if it's actually, you know, because I know there's Missouri stars and Ohio stars and all those, but this is just a scrappy star. But each one she's bordered. And again, this is, these are full size. I mean, these quilts took forever. Uh, let's see, this one is all, I can't tell if this one's hand quilted or not. Nope, I think this one's machine quilted. So this must be one of the tops that we did after she passed away. But I love it. And sometimes I've used this um, as a Christmas tree skirt because I just love the red. I've also used it as a tablecloth, not serving food or anything on it, but just as a tablecloth for decorative because it just kind of lends to that cozy holiday vibe, right? Oh, absolutely. So, and it's just super duper scrappy, as you can see. But look at her little perfect points. Uh, she did such a great job. And Emma. the thing I was going to mention was like with this one and the last one is you can tell they're not super modern. Yeah, because you said they're 50 years old, yeah. but they don't look like they're from the 60s or 70s. I mean, her eye for color yeah. and bringing something out that's so beautiful, especially being scrappy. I mean, yeah, it's I'm absolutely stunning. She had a wonderful eye for color. Like, I'm yeah. I'm floored. Like you, I would not have said 60s, 70s for that. I love that um, lemony custard background for that first quilt. I mean, I yeah, it's yeah. She just she had a, a talent for that. She she bought material, but she also she's from the era where they recycled material. Oh, you had a shirt or a dress that you no longer used. She would cut them up and use them. And I am not so sure that some of these on this Dresden aren't old flower sack material. I think they stopped making flower sacks like in the fifties. So it's possible she had stuff stashed, but stashed away. But I'm not so sure just based 
on the vintage print, like look at this blue one. I, I don't know. You know, these are just timeless. Oh, absolutely. 100% timeless. And so it doesn't, I just love them. And I just love staring at them, honestly. Okay, oh, yeah. so great job. If, if you're on my Instagram or my Facebook page, I posted the picture. This is the one that you used for your mm -hmm. thumbnail. And it created a lot of discussion because I was not sure what the name of the pattern was. So let me, this is a fantastic piece. So let's kind of zoom in here. So the name of the pattern is called Rose Dream. It has several names, but it's sometimes it's easier just to look at one block. <laughs> yeah. So there's a block. And then when you put it all together, you see it almost has an Irish chain effect. And so um, I had no idea what the pattern was. I've never seen anyone make this. So the Kansas City Star would publish free quilt patterns weekly. And there's probably a lot of newspapers around the country that do that. But the Kansas City Star, the area I'm from, published them weekly. And so this was in one of their publications, The Rose Dream. They republished it again under a couple of different names. So um, I am just, I love this quote. I'm just enamored with it. Now this looks more like 1960s, 70s, right? It has a, a little bit of a different vibe to it. And- Mm, yeah. I, it, it is a great, great, great quilt. I love it too. So I think this one is a lot of fun. So fun. And so the pattern is still available. And apparently there's a book out too that you can purchase. Um, someone local had created a book where they had taken all those patterns that were published over the years and put it into one book. I found out there weren't any available. So it's probably like an old book, no longer in publication. Right. Um, I am seeing a question here from Janet Johnson, and she wanted to know if your grandmother labeled the quilts. She didn't. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's something I wanted to talk about. No, I need to go back and label them. You know, I could put, obviously, she was the creator. She pieced them. I don't know who quilted them, but I could kind of estimate a date just based on what I know about her and her quilting style and then the names you know, certainly I could put the name, but I, I feel like I should go and label them because when I'm gone and the next people come up, my daughter, my nieces, my great nieces, and they have the quilts, I want them to treasure them, not to stick them in a garage sale or something. Right. I mean, Absolutely. So, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I do need to go through. And while I have them out, I should probably just do that. So I make my own quilt labels. I just use like a piece of muslin or a piece of solid um, material, cotton material. And then I put like fusible stuff on the back, fusible stick on heat and bond something. And then I have a set of pins that I got from Missouri star quilt company and they are, um, it just says fine tip fabric marker, but it has a Missouri star logo. And I, I think I got like five colors of this. So these um, won't wash. They fade a little bit, but they don't wash or bleed terribly. Heat set them. And then if you need to wash the quilt, you can, and you'll still have a great fabric marker. So I just handwrite my labels. What does everyone else do? Well, I'm naughty and I don't label my quilts, but I need to. So uh -huh. um, I, yeah. I know I, I'm bad and I've been looking for tips on what sort of marketing, because I think I'm going to have to handwrite it too. I don't have an embroidered machine. I don't have the budget or relative room for one. So, um, you know, no, because some of the pens I'm sure on the market are absolute junk. Um, yeah. So knowing, you know, which one actually works for somebody is invaluable. So maybe I'll be ducking on to Missouri style later on and getting some pens. Get some pens. Also, they have iron on quilt label pattern book on Missouri star quilt website. Um, I don't think I have one down here. I know I don't. They, some labels, like that. I, all I have to do is fill it in and sew it on. So, I mean, that part yeah. I have covered. I just need the right pen. So I appreciate yeah. you telling me about that because I think that might be a good option for me to start off with. Um, let me duck in 
um, to the chat and see what everyone else is saying. Um, Amy says she used to handwrite her labels, now she embroiders them. Uh, Joyce Baker uses micron markers. Um, this might be a, a good video um, for me is maybe buy like four or five different products and test them out. And yeah, 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 and just, yeah that might be a good little option for us. So yeah, I might have to get some micron ones. The, um, yeah, well, yeah, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I Janet do. says looks so beautiful. Uh, Leslie says they're stunning. Lynn says they look amazing. Yeah, you're getting a lot of um, neat um, comments on these because yeah, she just did such a um, beautiful job. Um, a, real quick before you read anything else, I when I first started, I think I found these like at Hobby Lobby. They're tiny little labels. Now I like to put lots of information on my quilt labels now, but these are those little satin quilt labels that you can just stitch on on the quilt in the corner. You can even fold them and attach them that way. Right. So that's a, another good cheater option. This particular one even says quilted with love. Maybe for a baby blanket or something, this would be cute. But I like to put who the pattern is, who the piecer is, who did the quilting, the date. You know, I like to make it a little more. So 50 years from now, when somebody's on YouTube showing Grandma Susan's quilts, they'll know when I made them, right? Exactly. I, I like that idea. Um, Beth is asking from Goody Goods, is I are, are you going to the retreat next week? Oh my gosh. I does she have the dates posted on that? Uh she'll tell me in a minute. Okay. I don't know what my days are off next week. I can't go for like the entire thing. Can I just pop in and out? Uh she'll tell us in a second, I'm sure. Um <laughs> Joyce says I can get Sweetwater labels. They put your name on them. The other thing I thought about doing too is getting the um, printable paper, but the paper that you can print on, the iron on yeah. stuff. But I think I'd have to do like six or eight quilts at a time. So I, you know, not wasting paper. So, um, sure. I mean, I, I got friends that can make labels for me as well, but it gets expensive after when you're making several of them. So I think I might do that pen thing and maybe do a yeah. test and do a video yeah. and wash a few of them and just play around some fun so, labels. Yeah, sorry. no yeah, I'm sorry so they're talking about labels so I'm gonna put my bandanas I have a friend who has a plant shop and I would love to add a little paper label does anybody have any great links like for Etsy or anybody who can make like a paper label at some point I would love to put one of those little satin labels on there you mentioned sweet water is yeah, that someone like um, I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's a company. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Amy says she uses Hobby Lobby labels for donation quilts. Beth says the retreat is Friday to Sunday next week. It's 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday. You should come. So if anyone's in the Kansas City area, whether it's Missouri or Kansas, or you're nearby and you want to go hang out at Casey Maker Studios, which is a wonderful quilt shop in that area. Definitely Understood. go check it out. They have wonderful retreats. Beth posts pictures about that all the time. I'm jealous because I would love to go, but it's like an 18 hour drive for me. So it's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, Piece of cake. Because, cake. I mean, I could, but I don't want to. And I'm not going to fly right now because, you know, like who knows if you need to take it. Yeah, you might not ever get here. Isn't that, what a mess. What a mess we're in. Um, I'll look. I'll look and see what dates I have off because can I come just one day or do I have to do both days, Beth, for that retreat? I wish I could uh, see them. That's fine. I'll let you know as soon as I can. The Quilting Compound says, yes, they have subscription label programs. I think they're talking about the Sweetwater. Thing. I might have to look into that myself, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we need to label our quilts. I'm really good about Maybe my very first one I didn't label, but I'm really good about labeling, labeling, labeling them now. And I also like the ones that are um, triangle shaped that you can just stick in the corner. I think that is oh, a, okay. I like that too. So, but I mix it up. It's whatever I have or a scrap piece of paper. And, and the nice thing about the markers is if you want to add a little embellishment or you want to draw a little something, you can do that because you, it's your like marker. You can be yeah. creative. All right. Well, I think I'm going to check into that very, very soon. And um, 
play around and do some different things and that sort of thing there. Okay, so um, Beth says you can come one day. It's one where you bring your stuff and you leave it so you don't have to bring it back and forth each night. But if you want to go for one day, you can. So yeah, definitely go out and hang out with Beth. Um, she would love to see you. Um, she says, I need to come out there, but yeah, unfortunately, um, not, not in the cards. Um, <laughs> maybe one day. Maybe I'll make the trip out to Kansas City one day and hang out with you all. So You should do it. We'll go to a Chiefs game. <laughs> That's fine. Well, I, I'd rather go to a Royals game. We can um, do that. We have season yeah. tickets. Look you up. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, that, 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 that um, yeah. takes care of that. I mean, my goal is to make it to all 30 ballparks at some point. I only have 24 more to do. Um, cool. And one thing I've really enjoyed is actually going on the um, tours that they offer. Yes. Yes. Those are fantastic. But you get to learn so much about the team. Like I did Pittsburgh the other year. I knew nothing about the Pirates. But by the time I left that tour, I, I knew the history. There was players I'd heard of, and I didn't realize they played for the Pirates. Um, yeah. You know, you learned why they were named the Pirates. Yeah, you learn so much. And you get to see all the cool stuff, like the press box, uh, the owner's suite. Sometimes yeah. you get to go on the visiting clubhouse, the bullpen. You actually get to go out onto the warning track. Then it will never let you on the field. Um, apparently, that, gra that grass is magical. And if you touch it, it I don't know, it dies or something. <laughs> Or you die, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So um, Laura Austin says that she loves a sweet water label. So yeah, I'm guessing I'm going to have to go get some sweet water labels soon and see how. Yeah, but I need to do something because, yeah, I'm, I'm bad. I'm naughty and I haven't um, labeled my quilts and I know I need to. And that's something I'm going to start doing this yeah. year. It's um, already in the cards. It's got to figure out the best way to do it for myself. Well, when I'm labeling my own quilt, I don't. I just stitch them on and I don't care if the stitching shows on the other side. But for these, my grandma's quilts, I probably should hand stitch them on because I don't want to ruin the integrity of the front of, of her beautiful quilt. I think I would hand stitch those on. Is that what, what do you guys think? I think that makes the most sense for me. I would. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not a hand stitcher at all, but um, I would definitely make the effort to um, yeah. learn how to hand stitch them onto the grandmother's quilt for sure. Yeah. Uh, Susan's asking if I have met, visited the Mariner Stadium in Seattle. No, I have not made it out there yet, but I'd love to get out there. The only West Coast team I've seen so far is San Francisco. We went to a game, um, afternoon game once. A great and city. then Oh, it's a beautiful city. And, um, yeah, we went to the afternoon game, and then we went to the airport and hopped on the plane and went to Sydney. So, like, the flight didn't leave till 11 p.m. So we figured, oh, right, we'll go into the city. Oh, hang yeah? Out. Yeah, go into the city, hang out for the day. Um, taking a ball game and then, you know, go back to the airport and, you know, up on a 16 hour flight. So I was going to say, how long is the flight there? Oh my gosh. Too darn long. <laughs> so our flight from Edinburgh here was eight hours. I literally thought I was going to have a panic attack because I can't afford <laughs> business class or anything. So I'm squished between two college students who are leaving the UK and coming to the States because they play college ball. And I'm like, can I sit on the end? They wouldn't let me sit on the end. I'm like, okay, well, pretend your mom is sitting here and she has to go to the bathroom every 35 minutes. <laughs> so I was crawling over these kids. Um, but yeah, it was eight hours. That's the first time I ever flown that long or that far. And so that was it. It was interesting. And my hand, my feet were so swollen by the time I got off that plane. Yeah. I don't know. 16 You're only halfway, halfway to Sydney, eight hours. It's I can't yeah, even. Closest, yeah, six, it's about 16 hours from LA or San Francisco to Sydney. On the way back, it's only like 14 because of the rotation of the earth and the winds. But yeah, when you go westbound, it's always longer. You, yeah, yeah, you just it's bad. halfway through, you just want to open the door and just go sit on the wing for a while just to get outside. <laughs> well, do you stop or is it you're in the air 16 hours? Uh, yep, nonstop. I can't wrap my head around that. Wow. Yeah. How often I, do you guys try to get back? I mean, I haven't been back in, last time I was there was in 2017. Okay. COVID. Uh, before COVID. Yeah, before COVID. Um, and then right now, it's just way too expensive. Um, because I have to, because like you said, I can't afford business class. Business class there and back, um, you would not get much change out of $20,000. Um, and I can't sit and coach because I'm 6'5". So I have to go um, into economy plus and right now those tickets are four thousand dollars so um yeah i'm not going anywhere for a while <laughs> blame you no 
I'm, I'm five, four and I can barely stand it. I don't, I can't imagine. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Okay. Let me show you my last and favorite quilt. So I remember when she gifted this to me, I was probably seven or eight years old and it has the most wear because this was on my bed for a long time. And most of you will know the, this quilt. This is the grandmother's garden. It's, a, it's a still a pattern that you see a lot of, even though it's such an old pattern, it's still a classic and it's made with all the little hexagon pieces that she, I would remember seeing stacks of those little hexes on her dining room table and she would color coordinate them. And then when she had a few minutes, she would just whip stitch a few of these little flowers together. Isn't that incredible? Oh, it's beautiful. It, this looks so timely. Let me back up a little bit. Um, so she was intentional about her fabric choices here, probably because it was a gift for me as a little girl. So she didn't use anything scrappy. It's all just great, solid, super intentional. This definitely has a early 70s vibe to me. But I mean, I'm that kid, right? So this is great. I know that this was during the time where she couldn't see as well because the binding is not fantastic. I mean, she was always so particular. So the binding on it is just not as perfect as everything else. But this one was hand quilted or I mean, machine long arm quilted. So probably because she couldn't see to do her job. But I love this. Oh, it's this beautiful. Is happy to look. It's just a happy quilt. I have a neighbor across the street and she has one similar to this that her grandmother had given her. So, um, so that's, I want to show you one more quilt and then I'll tell you the story behind it. Okay. So my grandmother, um, loved beautiful hankies. You know, back in the day where women carried little handkerchiefs in their pocketbooks and stuff. And so she had amassed quite a collection of beautiful handkerchiefs. So after she passed, my mom wanted to do something with those. And so she's like, well, what are some things we can do? So she, my mother made a quilt. So these are all the handkerchiefs that my grandmother had collected. And there, this is a full size, so there's a lot of them. I think she might have had to fill in a few with some that she picked up at yard sales or something, but not many. Most of them are my grandmother's. And so she just did a simple white border around each handkerchief. Isn't that great? I mean, that's just such a beautiful and personal way to preserve those because otherwise, you know, they just got to end armor. up. Because my grandmother loved flowers, the long armor chose this sweet little floral kind of reminds me of spirograph type quilting but on that but yeah very simple I I love it because I just love the story and the history behind it but yeah isn't that fun I love that it's just yeah so personal and it's like um yeah just a great way to preserve it one of my first quilts that I did was actually a project kind of similar to that. Um, one of Amanda's co-workers knew that I quilted and I'm like, well, I just started, but she had me, she sent me some of her grandmother's nightgowns and I cut out strips of those and made like a memory quilt out of it. So that there reminds me of that project. Oh, and that's fantastic. That was a lot of fun. And I have some tea towels and that from my aunt that one of these days I need to like, Put together maybe do something similar to that as well so that I mean i'm so happy that you um showed that because it kind of gives me a little bit of inspiration on what to do with that i think stephen bland did something with tea towels he said it's pretty heavy but you know it definitely can be done yeah um yeah. all right so amy says that the street water labels are just printable labels you can buy the blank eight and a half by 11 sheets for inkjet printer and print your own oh okay that makes sense um I'm Thanks. definitely going to go check that. I'm going to check those out. Yeah. Um, Janet says she needs to walk away from the machine. Jack is coming out. Jack is coming out too much. My rule is if you have to use Jack twice on the same piece in a row, it's time to walk away. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's worked well for me. Joy says she only has 28 stadiums left to visit. Um, you know, uh, some 20 sorry, my baby went in on my lap. Oh, no, you're fun. We always love seeing doggos. So 
the cone of shame. This is Parker. He is a Cavachon. And um, I gave him a little pain pill this morning, so he's kind of out of it. But he needed he needed some love and time, so he's probably <sighs> outside. Poor baby. He's doing good. He's doing real good. Sweet boy. All right. So we've done we're done with showing quilts. Yeah. Um, we won't run away just yet. I'm just, I'm maybe I, I figure since I'll have you, maybe we'll ask a couple of questions. And if anyone has any questions in the chat, definitely throw them in and we will, um, as soon as I find the right. Okay, Janice says that's what happened. She she walked away from it too. Yeah, I find if you do um, make the mistake too many times, it just, all you got to do is get frustrated. And yeah, sometimes it's just best to walk away. Or that do is with free motion quilting. Like one day can go so great and the next day can go so horribly wrong. And mm -hmm. you didn't anything, you didn't even change a needle or change the thread. I don't know. I, you know, one of the greatest piece of advice is that a quilter gave me is she said, have a glass of wine before you even start. And now look, sometimes I quilt at 11 o'clock in the morning. So don't judge me. I'll have a glass of wine or a little shot of something. And I do think that relaxes you enough just to kind of not be so tense when you're doing things. And, and, and I think most quilter errors like that are us, you know, like we're the ones that screw things up. We go too fast or we make a curve too fast when free motion quilting and that sort of thing. So, um, I definitely just sometimes have to put it up and walk away, turn it off, turn the light off and head out the door. Yeah. Or we'll work on a different project. You know, I have um, I usually try and have like a, a simple mindless project. So that way, if I'm doing something complicated, like my Wizard of Oz or the Darksome one, if it's getting too much for me and I still want to sew, I don't have to walk away necessarily, but I can go ahead and work on like last year's was the Scrappy Diamond. Um, that was just mindless. It was 16 patches and then some other stuff. You know, I, I could do that with my eyes closed. So it's good to have that as well. I agree. Um, oh, you're... Wizard of Oz, those blocks are incredible. Oh my oh, god. It's incredible. been so much fun. Um the cutting, the cutting part is not so much fun, you know. So if cotton cuts, if you're listening, um, if you could do a pre-cut of the Wizard of Oz for us, yeah. You know, <laughs> there you go. Um, you gotta do it together. Sorry. And then all we have to do is piece it together. What? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's what they do for the puzzle mystery quilt. Um, that says I wish they could, you know, be mm. nicer if there was there was more, you know, pre-cut options. But yeah, that's the toughest part for that Wizard of Oz is putting cutting oh, it all out. It's, I think the Scarecrow has um, like 135 pieces. Dorothy had like 85. I think Tinman was about the same. Um, and then there's uh, block five is the Emerald Emerald City. Mm -hmm. And oh, good gravy. I, I don't even want to think about how many pieces that thing has. Like that might yeah. be the last one I do. Like you might not right. be seeing block five for a while. Like we'll we'll do Glen Glenda the Good Witch next. You know um, what? So my niece and I were having a conversation the other night. I just did the um 2022 Angela Walters quilt along her block of the month. It's pretty reasonable once you, I think it was like 39 bucks and you get every month, you get the material to make a 10 inch block and it goes for 10 months. So I just finished the last one and some of the pieces are like one inch. They're so tiny. And so I was talking with my niece about it and I said, how funny that I can sit here and spend a while piecing a block together with one inch blocks, but to make a bowl cozy, you're going to have to knock me over the head and I'm going to have to, I, I, I can't stand doing those stupid bowl cozies. I know you did a whole show on them. Why do I hate them so much? So I just think it's funny. I don't know. Maybe it's not as mindless when you're just stitching little pieces together. It's not really mindless, but I find it a little more comforting than it makes me anxious to make a bowl. Cozy. Have you tried my pattern? I haven't tried your pattern. Did it you make you anxious? I will. Give it a go because, like, I've heard some. Like, I got a lot of comments on the bowl cozy pattern that the one that I found and I found it somewhere online. Yeah. Um, 
it's so much easier than the templates and everything else. I mean, basically, it's a 10 inch square, you cut it out, you sew some batting to it, um, and then flip, stitch around, and then you're done. Like, it, they're so easy. So, yeah. Hard. Something about them just make me insane. I don't understand. I don't know. I, well, because Ooh. I'm crazy. I mean, so I, I'm, and I own it, I embrace it. I am the definition of hot mess most days. That's, and that's fine. We all love different things, you know, and that's what makes us unique. Yeah, that's true. That is so very. Someone is asking, um, Joyce says she's not familiar with that quilt. This is the Wizard of Oz blocks that I've done. Amazing. It's, I love that yeah. material. Yeah, this is the Tinman, oh. um, which I made last week. And it's a um, quilt along that's been hosted by Art East Quilt. Is it Art East um, Quilt Co. or whatever it is. Um, they're a company based out of Nova Scotia in Canada, and they do a, a yearly quilt along. And this year's is the Wizard of Oz. And yeah, I've done the two blocks so far, the Dorothy and the Tinman. And this one I just thought was cute. And I actually was naughty and changed it up. This um, gray fabric here was actually meant to be like the whole body, but then I decided, and then the silver was supposed to be like the chin and the hat. But I figured the silver needed to be the focus. I love that. Yeah. So. Yeah, that silver material is great. Was it? It is. But easy to sew with do you think did it feel different it, no i mean it really it's it's a kona it's kona cotton sheen um i thought it'd be hard to sew with but i mean it's so i mean it felt to me just like regular cotton thread i mean cotton cotton um yeah. so yeah it doesn't feel any different sewing with yeah. it I, so yeah if you ever get um the desire to use the sheen go for it i mean it's not it's not weird it's not thick it's not um unwieldy or anything else like that so um a dog bandana that i had this is robert kaufman and it has that gold like just a little bit of gold yeah. into it but um yeah it feels like regular cotton so i didn't know if bigger sheets did would or not interesting yeah that's yeah. beautiful i was really weird like I, I was a little uneasy about using it because i was like yeah is it is the machine go that eat it is it going to like it you know is it going to be thick is it going to meld with the background fabric and yeah thankfully it's i mean they designed it well it's it's a beautiful fabric and it's so so nicely as well um, i can put the link for the um art east quilt company in in a minute so if anyone's interested in joining it the um that quilt gonna have sorry how many blocks nine okay um from what i understand it's going to be Dorothy, Scarecrow, Tinman, Cowardly Lion, the Emerald City itself, uh, Glinda the Good Witch, oh, the wow. Wing Monkeys, um, the Evil Witch, and then Toto. I think that's nine. Oh my gosh. I can't wait yeah. to see them together. Yeah. There are great free quilt alongs too. Um, I have a quilt on this, my little dog's laying on a bed, and I have a quilt on this bed right now that I did meadow mist designs she has a blog and a facebook page but every year she does a free quilt along and you get the pack every month the instructions all that so if anybody's ever looking for you know just a fun quilt along to do i highly recommend meadow mist designs her her patterns are simple um but they're beautiful and so it's just a fun it's kind of fun and you're doing it with a community of people, you know, and that makes it fun. You get to see how much different it's amazing how someone's fabric choices will make a completely different looking quilt, even though it's the same pattern. Like, oh, absolutely. It, yeah. It's incredible to me. Yeah. So I love her quilts. I I'm not doing the one for this that just started. Um, I think in December, but I've done three of them now. I, and they are great. They are great. Yeah, and it's always good to have like the quilt along, like you said, and there's a lot of free ones out there. Um, I, I tend to get drawn to the the paid ones, but you know, like, yeah, if you can find something that's out there, it's I mean, if I can find something that's free and yeah. it's gonna work, you know, I'll definitely jump on board of that too. So it just yeah, it depends on what speaks, you know, whatever speaks to you, I say go for it, you know, like the designer, her name is Cheryl, and she just has some really great patterns. And they're I mean, they look like traditional, but yet 
with the right material choices, you could give it a little more modern edge. Do you consider yourself a modern quilter? Like what, what kinds of things are you drawn to other than those beautiful paper piecing things? That's not paper piecing. That's traditional. Oh, it is. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. They do a lot of, yeah, they do a lot of flip and stitch. Um, okay. I, I know how to FPP. Uh, my friend Beth taught me how to yeah. do it. Um, but it's not, it's not my calling yet. I have not jumped on the FPP bus. Um, and FPP is foundation paper piecing for anyone that might not know what it is because sometimes we get into these acronyms and we then realize not, not everybody knows what it is. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely a traditional piecer. Um, I love modern quilts, but I haven't done a lot of them yet. But if I had to say, and I've answered this question on different interviews in the past, I believe I'm a traditional piecer, but I do like to go towards a more modern fabric. And I also really, really enjoy using um, solids, which is unusual apparently, um, but I love working with solids. So I did on my Facebook and Instagram, and also I think on YouTube, I, I did an improv quilt. So I was kind of like a a backstage creeper on this Instagram, um, 30 days of improv quilting was the hashtag. And so I was watching how they were doing like triangles or curved or color block or space, you know, they were doing all these different things. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to try putting a few things together. I ended up making an entire quilt and it was so freeing to do improvisational quilting. Oh, it was, sure. oh my gosh, it was fantastic. You could, I could see where you could really get tied up and spend a lot of time on one block. Um, but the nice thing about doing that challenge, the improv 30 days of improv challenge is that they, they force you to try different things, you know, so you don't kind of get stuck because you could spend an hour on one silly block, just trying to get it to look right. You have to kind of be in that different mindset to be a little more freer when it comes with putting, you know, pieces together. Oh, absolutely. It's great. Uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun, but I would say I'm more of a traditional piecer as well, because I mean, that's my, that was, that's my heritage. That's what I grew up seeing. That's what right. I thought my whole collections are. And so I think I tend to lean toward that too, but there's so many great opportunities just to change a fabric and, and make something look a little more modern or, you know, a little more up to date than, than just scrappy stuff. Although I do love a vintage look. I do do love a good vintage. Yeah. I always find too, like, um, I just love looking at quilts and that's where I find Instagram, which is where I found you, um, yeah. comes in so handy because Instagram so is full, if you, you know, full of quilts and just wonderful creators and they just post all the pictures of these wonderful quilts i get a lot of inspiration from that itself like facebook you know they have some stuff but you know you have to sort through all the other yeah. you know people ranting and raving about whatever but yeah instagram you can just scroll pinterest drives me insane i, I cannot do pinterest like i want to murder someone before i get to the link i need to get to but I, yeah no that's true i only like pinterest if i'm looking for something specific you know, so not, click on this and then click on that and do yeah. that. It's like a 17 step process. I'm, I'm not going to do that. You know, I, yeah. So Instagram is a lot of my inspiration. I find a lot of cool stuff there and my viewers too. Um, are wonderful. They, they send me suggestions. That's how I found the mythical darks and someone sent me a message and said, Hey, Sean, you need to go get, get this pattern. And you know, five minutes later, I'm hitting the buy button. So, um, awesome. you know, yeah, they do a lot of neat things for me as well. So, um let me see um what is in the chat to see um what i've missed because i've been neglecting that a little bit today pat sloan does many quilts alongs that are free as well and That's she's true. a one yeah she's a wonderful person she was on um donna's channel a week or two ago with an interview and that was so much fun to watch um so definitely head over and check that out if you didn't see that um but yeah she has some neat stuff um let's see donna says she's late she's traveling today i'm so glad to have you here this morning donna it's always good to have you oh. uh nancy said she did my bulk cozies uh, i think quite a few people did okay. uh lynn bylas said she used my bulk cozies. She made a few as christmas presents so quick and i i made bulk cozies for my co-workers for christmas a few years ago 
Um, and that's kind of dangerous because if you give them one, um, they'll come back because they're so good yes. um, that they want four or five more. <laughs> That's, I think, where I got frustrated. They're like, oh, can I get these? And before you know it, I've made a dozen. I'm like, I don't even like, I don't even like making this. So I, I made, my niece made them and I bought them from her instead. I cheated. But yeah. All right, I'll look at your video. I'll look and see what, what pattern you have. And then if I can find a pattern to this dog bandana too, I'll make sure to drop those in the, in the links later. Because these are fun, you guys. They're so simple. There's, it's just two pieces of material. I don't have any kind of sizing or anything in between the two. And, oh, so darn cute. And yeah, easy. My, my sister made us some, and she sent some across for our dogs. But then uh, my youngest, Finley, um, chewed, chewed holes in them all. So now I'll have to make some more. Well, my niece makes the over-the-collar ones. That yes. My dog doesn't wear a collar. So I, I, the tie ones scare me with a puppy. He's in the kennel a lot. I don't want him to get his leg caught through there or something. So I thought the snaps were just kind of a neat, a neat and they just look so crisp and clean. So we'll see, we'll see how, how that goes. Sounds good. All right. So uh, let's see what else we've got for you. Um, we've talked about how you started quilting. Yeah. Um, just looking through my list of questions. This is where Donna is the queen of um, interviews, not me. So um, what motivated you to start a YouTube channel? So I had started one um, a long time ago where I had, both my parents are past and we had challenges like get into the doctors and medicines and different things and being a nurse, all that became, was so easy to me, but I realized people who don't have medical backgrounds, I can appreciate how difficult it is to navigate all of that when you're dealing with illnesses. So I had started a channel to kind of talk about how some hints and tips and suggestions on, you know, your aging parents. And so that's where my channel started. And then I stepped away from a very, for a very, very long time. Uh, while my daughter was in high school and I was doing high school senior photography at that time, I was so busy. I stepped away, but I kept the channel. So I deleted everything and then I've already, I already had it existing. So when I started the free motion quilting journey, um, I just kind of hopped back on and was able to get back in there and rebuild that channel a little bit. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's always, I, I love hearing the stories about, you know, what motivated people to start a channel, you know, because um, we all have our own stories. We all have our own reasons. I mean, I did it, like I was mentioning earlier, you know, for motivation and actually get something done. Yeah. Uh, another question I would like to know is what are your long-term goals, like quilting-wise? Are you planning on doing more? Are you planning on getting a long arm in the future? Are you trying to do a business or just doing it for fun? Um, ideally. So my goal is to retire in about six years from nursing. I would love to venture into some sort of retirement hustle that had to do with quilting. Um, I would love to get a long arm. Uh, the price point just terrifies me right now. And I'm not, I feel like I'm not that good at it. I am using a frame and a traditional sewing machine. And I, I feel like if once I kind of get that, challenge overcome a little bit then maybe just transitioning into a long arm will be easier and i'll probably buy like a used one and start um my fear is and i i see this happen to everybody now all of a sudden your people are giving you your quilts and you don't even have time to do your own stuff <laughs> like you're so busy quilting everyone's quilts that you don't even have time for your own so my ultimate goal would to have a long arm maybe do some commercially for people, but I would also just love to have a small studio space where people could come together and we could do so longs and we could do different craft projects or paint nights or, you know, that kind of thing. So I live in a neighborhood that is called a new urban community. It looks like it belongs like on a beach town somewhere. Um, the houses look old, but they're all brand new. They're all super close together. Nobody has yards, but everyone has these great front porches. There are alleyways that connect our houses. None of the garages face the front. It's, it's just kind of looks like an old fashioned neighborhood. And so they really want people who live here to run businesses and make it feel like a, you know, an, an old timey, you know, town 
where you're running home at lunch and put a sign on your door. Hey, I'll be right back. So there is room to build a business like that here too. So it'll probably be a dual purpose for me. My husband wants to do a, um, golf, uh, like a VR golf thing. What am I trying to a simulator? Yes. yes. We, we thought we could somehow put those two things together. So, you know, yeah, that's my goal. I know that I, and I meant to message Beth a goody goods the other day, like with her long arm, um, you know, she, she went all out. Has she ever, even for a second regretted taking that plunge <laughs> for her long arm? I'm scared. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be an interesting question to ask. Uh, yeah. Cause I know at the beginning she had, you know, like the, the learning curve and uh, um, that sort of thing there. It was interesting to watch that. And I was like, you know, like I've only used a long arm once. I played with one at a quilt show and it looked like, you know, a, a half blind, toddler did it so um yeah the fact that people can actually do it impresses me i do have some other questions that donna has asked um saves me having to go look for them um the first one is what is the hardest quilt you have made oh you know it's also the easiest one and here's here's the answer it would be that improv quilt <clears throat> because it was such a breakaway from what I've been doing, but also, um, I had a 14 year old Shih Tzu dog that we put down in July. She was sick, had like a little tumor. And so she had been my quilting buddy for years and years and years. So I took all of those pieces of all the projects I did, you know, with her literally at my feet, on my lap, on the chair next to me, and so this improv was also not just only trying something new, but it was an emotional process for me too. And so I dedicated the quilt to my dog. You know, we love our pets. And we so that's just a culmination of all the, all the memories of all the quilts that I've made and then just the time that I spent with her. So it, it, was, it was the hardest because it was such a breakaway from what traditionally I've been doing and because it was an emotional process for me too but I needed to do that uh, grieving a pet is real it's mm -hmm. real oh it so, is absolutely you know just to kind of process it, it's hard it's hard to sit there with your babies at the vet's office I mean yeah you I'm sure most of you have been through that it's tough it's a tough challenge but um I am not a perfectionist quilter either so I, when I first started I blindly thought I could do anything <laughs> So I was like putting stuff together and it was terrible. I didn't know it was terrible at the time. I look back at it now and think, oh, it was terrible. But I didn't know I had just enough confidence um, and arrogance to think, well, I can do this. So I just was throwing stuff together. But I'm not a perfectionist. So that that also takes some pressure off when you're quilting. Yeah, mm -hmm. so what I miss, right? I'm not, I, I don't stress over that stuff. Yeah, and I don't think you need to. I mean, to me, every quilt is a learning experience. Sometimes we jump in over our heads and try and attempt stuff. Like, yeah, you know, that happened to me as well with the um, the bear paw quilt and the Rhapsody quilt that I did last year. When I started those, it was way over my head. I did, especially the bear paw, I, I did not have the piecing skills to do that because it had to be pretty accurate to even come close. And mm -hmm. uh, I put that away. I mean, it, it frustrated me so badly. I put that thing away for like two or three years. And when I came back, then I'd do a little bit and come back. And then last year, I decided I'm finishing this thing. And yeah. I had the skill set then. Like I was able to do, yeah, you know, a good yeah. quarter inch seam. I was able to put yeah. everything together. I was out. Yeah. And so sometimes, yeah, but That's it was cool. a good learning experience. Like everything you always, yeah, even if it looks, and you look back at something, like you said, it may look terrible, but you aren't where you are today. Yeah. Unless you were where you were back then. Yes. If that makes sense. So like whether it's three motion quilting or piecing or whatever it is, unless you plan on entering it into a show and you plan on winning a ribbon, um, near, near enough is good enough. I, I often say 95%, you know, is my rule. If it's 95% right, it's good. And if you're in any school, 95 is still an A. <laughs> hey, what's passing? 65, 70? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, you, know, you might you might want to go a little more than you know yeah. passing, you know. But yeah, I mean, if it's not perfect, like just 
is it worth the time? In the end of the day, my, my, I sit there and look to myself, is it worth the time of me ripping out whatever it is that's wrong and redoing it? Or right. is it just going to be okay? Because like, you know, once it's part of a bigger project or you've quilted over it or anything else, are you really yeah. going to see if it's off by two millimeters? Well, that's the beautiful thing, I think, with, with the quilting. When you finish it, it hides so many flaws. And then you wash your quilt and you yeah. get that wonderful crinkly, oh my gosh, yeah, that does hide a multitude of sins. And who yeah. cares? You're going to give it to someone. They're not going to know that a point is oh. cut off. A point doesn't match. They're just going to wrap themselves in this wonderful creation that you spent so much time and effort and love putting together for them. And yeah. then they'll, you know, they'll enjoy it and appreciate it. Yeah. And we are usually our own worst critics, you know, like what we see, like, like you said, if you show it to your, your husband, your wife, your, your kid, dog's not going to pay any attention to it. They, no. they're, they're going to see all the beautiful colors and the pieces and everything else that you've done. And that's yeah. all going to matter to them. Meredith says that she loved the trunk show, great color scraps. Um, everyone enjoyed the show so much. Thank you. Um, let's see. Donna says that quilt sounds like it was very therapeutic as well. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, and I, I love hearing the stories. And that's yeah. something I did. Um, I'm really trying to pay more attention to is the stories behind the quilts. Um, yeah. I had COVID last October and I was in isolation in my own little room and I couldn't come down here and so and that was driving me nuts and I pulled out um I couldn't have a live so what I did was I found some photos from a quilt show I went to and they had like little notes next to it and so I put that together as like a premiere and Great. absolutely loved it viewers yeah. loved it that's kind of where I'm I've just fallen in love with that like listening to the stories so anytime someone wants to come on and tell us about quilts or anything else, you know, I just absolutely fall in love with it. You know, Stephen and I did a live a couple of months ago where we talked about five favorite quilts and it was just nice to hear the stories. Yes. Yeah. I love that too. And you know, that's a good point because all of my grandmother's quilts, I wish I knew the stories behind them, you know, like why did she do these color choices and what was happening in that stage of her life that she decided to, to make that challenging pattern or whatever. Yeah. There's, there's a story behind every one of these. And then my sister has a stack of quilts that were my grandmother's. I mean, my grandma was a quilting machine. My cousins have them. If we put them all together, we could probably have our own quilt museum. No kidding. Oh, I believe it. And I'm an hour from Missouri Star Quilt Company, Hamilton, Missouri. And I was there over the summer. I popped in to do something. And I went through their quilt museum. It was phenomenal. I, if you have never been, or if you're coming through to Hamilton or going to Missouri Star, take the time to go through their quilt museum. It's amazing. And Jenny Doan has, she changes her, she rotates the quilts that she has on display. She rotates them because her collection is so amazing. And, um, I guess she had some of, um, the chief's head coach, Andy Reed, his wife is a quilt collector. And so she had a, uh, you know, a, a borrowed collection in there too. So it is a fantastic, fantastic museum. It's really great. So if anybody ever has a chance to do that, I highly recommend it. I think it was 15 bucks. You could spend all afternoon in there. It was great. It was great. Absolutely. And um, I, I'd like to get out there someday, but I don't know when, but yet as a quilt museum, um, somewhere up in the mountains of Virginia, I need to go visit someday. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Well, it's like and a four hour drive, so I have to make a day of it, but you know, one of these days I'll get up there and take a look around. Um, because the history of those quilts, like even um, Missouri star had a few civil war quilts, but I mean, that area probably has a nice collection of civil war era or civil war patterns too. You know, when you think about in the United States history, and the history of the quilt itself, which is amazing. Um, yeah, I would love to see. That's that's neat. I, I think there's one in Colorado. There's the, I think it's a national museum. There's, there's, yeah, I, I think it's fun just to take your time out and go and see and appreciate something that someone else has done. And another one that inspires me is that G's Bins quilters. Okay. The ones from, South, are they South Carolina from G's Bins, South Carolina? Um, it's a group of black women who've been in this area for a very, very, very long time. 
the tradition of quilting um, from slavery days into current. And um, they do a very improvisational. It's amazing. Their quilts are amazing. It's G-E-E-S, Bend. G's Bend Quilters. And it's family. It's a it's like families of of generations of women who who are quilters and they loan their quilts out to some of these museums and they're amazing they're amazing there's a great youtube documentary too on them too yeah i'll have to check that out because i got yeah. i got family in south carolina so next time i go down there i might have to go yeah um take a look at that um i just love seeing all the comments here um it's hard to keep up boy go back and look at everything yeah. Um, all right. So we have more questions for you. Um, Stephen did bring up a very good point, and I didn't get a chance to say this, but he says you sometimes just have to learn to say no when it comes to people that want you to do projects and that for you. Because like you said, this is supposed to be fun. Um, I've learned to say no to certain, you know, a lot of people um, because I don't want to overwhelm myself. Yeah. So it, it's hard. I'm, I'm a people pleaser. I, I hate saying no. With a passion, but sometimes, yeah, if it's too much, yeah. um, you know, don't take on too much. You know, do look after yourself first. You know, because you work a lot. You know, you're, you know, working in the middle of the field is not easy, and you have limited time. So, make it, make it for you. Yeah, sorry, my computer's talking to me. No, that's a hundred percent agree. I I feel like when something becomes a chore, yeah, and you don't enjoy it anymore. Photography became that way to me. I loved the process of creating the images and the editing, but the business side was draining to me. And so I just had to step away. And finally I got out of it when my uh, daughter was a senior in high school. I'm like, I wanted to enjoy her senior year. So I just kind of stepped away from it at that point. But yeah, when it became a chore, then I, I, I just didn't find the joy in it anymore for sure. <clears throat> All right. So a couple more questions for you is what was your first quilt that you made? Well, I did a split rail. Um, okay. So I didn't even, I, I had a borrowed sewing machine. Remember I told you the story. <laughs> I had a borrowed <laughs> sewing machine. I had uh, donated supplies and I asked everyone I knew for material. Like I didn't, I didn't have anything, right? I didn't have anything. So I'm like, hey, does anybody have any scrap material that they're not using? And so that quilt is a representation of all the people that showed me love when I started this journey. And so I just did a split rail. It, it's it's adorable. It's cute. It's a very cute quilt. Um, I actually have it hanging up on my quilt ladder right now. So it's super <laughs> colorful. Crazy. It's a crazy quilt, I will call it. And then I did, I quilted it myself. And I just did what I call drunk wavy lines. Have you, have you ever tried to do a straight line on your sewing machine? So I just did these little wavy lines, cross hatched them, quilted it myself. And it's, it's cute. It's a really cute piece. So yeah, that was the first one I did. Awesome. I just loved hearing the stories of everyone's first quilts because some people do um, super simple. Like I did the six and a half inch square patchwork um, because I was teaching myself, I didn't have, um a, a friend or a relative or anyone else that could teach me how to do it so i was you know learning and graduating from youtube university all at the same time hey. so i just i went super simple i was like this is not where i need to get complicated let me do one and then i can try something more um yeah. so it, but it's it's wonderful to hear stories of like i've seen some people do some really really complicated stuff and being successful at it but like you, i think it's usually because they've had a friend or someone else that can help them along so yeah. Yeah, I love hearing first quilt stories. And then Donna also asked, um, where do you see your channel in five years' time? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't should I have a goal? Is that bad that I don't have a goal? No, um, some people have it have a have a vision, some don't, and that's yeah, that's perfectly no, cool. I mean, I don't know. If I so if I retire in six years and I'm able to create a small retirement business out of that, that would be amazing to incorporate that. So like if I did classes, I would love to be able to film those, you know, and, and put those up on my channel. So no matter if it's a painting class or a photography class or a quilting class or whatever creative outlet we choose to pursue, I think that would be fun. So more like a, a maker's type channel, I think maybe later yeah. on. I'm terrible about being consistent though, like about filming. 
I'm kind of moody. So <laughs> I, I might not be in the mood for a while and then I'll hop back on. So I, I need to like make a planner and plan through. And then what I love about like Beth at Goody Goods is she just does a simple live. And maybe that's what I need to do because editing videos is a chore. So maybe just do a live. And even just when you're throwing something simple together, you can just pop on and have some conversation. I need to think like that more often. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be, you know, great audio and great lighting. And we just do it and connect with people really is what it's about. Absolutely. And I think the viewers, um, I mean, I have so many people show up here every Saturday morning. I mean, for some folks out in the Pacific, you know, it's six o'clock in the morning, they, they hop on, you know, they love to interact with us. So yeah, hop on, do a live and just, you know, just have some fun, you know, like it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be anything polished. I mean, I, I just pick a project and bring it on and yeah, week after week, you know, people show up and it, it, I don't know, it make, makes me feel special, you know, that people take the time and the energy to come, you know, because they could be doing so many other things. I mean, there's so many wonderful creators out there, but oh. they could be what, but they choose to come and, you know, hang out with me for an hour or so, and my guest. And yeah, okay. it just, yeah, I don't know. It just, it means, it means a lot to me. So um, thank you, everybody. It, it comes, whether you're here live or you come back and watch the replay, it, it means the absolute world to me. So yeah, yeah get, um, do, do some lives and then, yeah, maybe bring some guests. I always love having guests because it, it's really nice to have someone to talk to. Yeah. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. I didn't realize how much I missed it till last week when I did one by myself. I was like, <laughs> how boring, how boring it was. Yeah. Well, again, with me being introverted, um, it's hard. Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I get it. I get it. It's fun. I'm not I'm articulating back. myself very well. Um, <laughs> All right, Susan says it's much more fun than being on the playground of unruly kids. Okay, well, I'm glad we're, we're better than that. <laughs> um, check in the chat real quick. Okay. Um, if anyone else has any questions, um, definitely throw them in the chat real quick. Otherwise, we'll probably go ahead and wrap this up because um, I've got to go run and do some things and get some sewing done because if I don't get any sewing done, tomorrow's podcast is going to be, hey, welcome to the guy who sews podcast. I did nothing. Um, have a great week. We'll see you next time. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> uh, that, that'd drive me nuts. Um, but I, thankfully today I should be able to have quite a bit of time. So I've got to run some errands, but other than that, I should be able to do some, um, uh, quite a bit of sewing. So that's kind of my goal for today. So. Um, bandanas that's my goal i'm trying to get enough to take to the shop so i've made like a little assembly line i have all of them cut and now i'm just gonna piece them all together and then i'm gonna turn them all inside out and iron them so i kind of have like a little assembly line which is why my space is just a wreck right now but i don't care hey I you gotta do what you gotta do i mean I, I i always say that a clean sewing room is someone that i've just cleaned it or isn't using it exactly <laughs> exactly if I sweat around the sweeper right now in this, it would clog it up. There is so much stuff on the floor. So yeah, I'm, yeah, it's, this is real, real life people. Yeah, we keep real here. So that's why we get along so well. All right. Um, well, I think we have any other questions. Let me just make sure there's nothing else that I wanted to um, go over. You know, let's, let's ask a couple of fun questions real quick. These are real quick and easy. It's an either or thing. Um, do you before prefer solids or prints? Prints. Okay, I figured. I mean, I'm I'm probably the only person in the quilting world that would say solids. I love, um, and I have a quilt pattern that I got from Susie Quilts. It's the I think it's called the Fireside, and it's all solids. And I have all my fabric selections for it. I just haven't taken the time to do it. I've been pulled in other directions, but it's going to be a all solids. So I'm anxious to try that. It'll be beautiful. Excellent. Yeah. Um, flying geese or half square triangles? Uh, half square triangles. However, I'm getting better at flying geese because I got the block lock rulers. I mean, overall, that makes your half square triangles and your flying geese better. So I, I'm not as intimidated by them as I used to be. Excellent. Um, 
Traditional pacing or FPP? Traditional. I haven't even tried FPP. Well, that's not true. I tried it one time uh, on a Moda Blockheads challenge they were doing, which was way beyond my skill level. But I, I did manage to get through one paper piece block that spelled out love. Uh, it was fun, but I, I don't know. I don't know. There's people that really love, I mean, that's, they love it. I don't know. I don't know if it's for me. I haven't made that decision yet. I'm kind of like you, like, I don't know. Yeah. I like having that skill set in my box. Um, and if you want someone that's really good at teaching you, um, you have someone local. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know. She's how I learned. Yeah. 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 Tap yeah. into that resource. Yeah. She's um, always going to do this. Here's a class. Let's do that. Yeah. 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 Oh, Love so she video is how I learned how to FPP. Like yeah. it's all down to her. So yeah, if and okay. you, yeah, you're just down the road from her. Yeah, yeah make use of that resource. Yeah. Um, sure. Machine binding or hand binding? I prefer hand binding because it forces me to slow down and just kind of live in the moment. I'm not a great hand binder. Like I'm not great at it. But I can watch a movie for two or three nights, you know, and or put something on and um, just kind of settle in to that moment. I, I like to machine bind if I'm trying to quickly put something together. So I think it's useful, but having given an option, I would definitely hand bind. Excellent. And I've never hand bound anything I need to um, for my show quilts because whatever reason Virginia says that we need to um sew down the back corners the mitre corners which yeah. I didn't so yeah that'll be something I'm going to learn this year so that's um that'll be fun yeah. um let's see next question is going to be bold colors or muted neutrals bold with a vintage flare okay if that makes sense Does. you know Reds, teals, I mean, olive greens, those are kind of the colors I tend to lean towards. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I always say, like, I, 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 I look, my favorite color to quilt with is rainbow. Like, yeah, the bolder and brighter. I mean, you've seen my quilts. I mean, nothing is, nothing is, um, I didn't know that I've done a muted, um, neutral. I love, I love a muted quilt. In fact, this one from Missouri Star that I'm doing, let me grab a couple blocks out real quick. We have time. Yeah, we've got a few more minutes. Sure. Um, the I decided to go with like a vintage because the one they showed on their channel was vintage colors. So it is just a simple little star block. I think it finishes out at eight and a half inches, but I'm doing muted colors, like earthier colors, which is a step away from what I normally would do. But so this is the one when I just have a few extra minutes, I just throw a block together real quick. This is the same background, just with different color. Pops. It's a, it was a free pattern that I got from Missouri Star. I, I take advantage of that resource for sure. Living so close, I'd be crazy not to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's not like I can just hop in the car and be there in two and a half hours like you. So. Right, right. I can be there in an hour not to be rubbing it in or anything. No, you're fine. I mean, I've got a nice quilt shop nearby that I can utilize it's still i think they yeah. said it's like the largest one in virginia so you know like having that so close you um, should do it there you should you should just you know come with me to the quilt shop and you should do a live there we all i love to see different shops yeah i'll have to do that one day but usually it's like in the middle of the day and i just want to get in do my shopping you know touch the fabrics and then head home so but one of these days i will make the effort to um That's great do that so um see okay apparently Teresa Louise is doing a so along this afternoon Ooh, yeah and she always does beautiful stuff so it might be something else for us to check out I um, love Lara, La, Lara Fuller Earth and Odyssey with us she's here from Wales and she has a YouTube channel as well she's just getting started um so definitely check out her channel if you haven't seen that already right. um and then the quilting compound is asking, is anyone doing the temperature quilt? Apparently it has lots of flying geese. Um, I did a temperature quilt um, with my sister six or seven years ago. It was just a series of two and a half by five inch rectangles. And we just did that for a whole year. And that was a lot of fun. Like 
I did mine for my city and then she did hers for hers. And then we swapped them um, when we saw each other in 2018. So that, that was a lot of fun. I've seen a lot um, of very that. I mean, I think you can make it the way you want it to. I mean, you know, when I'm, you just kind of do your own thing, but yeah, those are interesting. Uh, I'll, I'm, I'm, that might be something fun to check into. Yeah. I've seen them on Instagram, all over Instagram, but I've not decided if I wanted to do one yet or not, but that's interesting. I didn't realize there were flying geese in that. I guess I need to pay more attention. I think you can have flying. The one I did was just rectangles. I didn't do anything fancy. Yeah. Um, so you can do it either way. Um, I plan on doing a tutorial for my version of a temperature quilt cool. soon. Okay, um, cool. And I kind of want to do one as well. And I've got to figure out how to do it. Um, I'd like to do one for like sports teams, like doing a record of their year. Like for me, I'm a Chicago White Sox fan. It was the first ballpark I went to. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to do like a temp like a, a quilt showing their wins and losses from a certain uh, year. And I think I'll go back to 2005 when they won the World Series. And I think it'd be fun to show like month by month, you know, did they win, did they lose? And that's yeah. just by using different pieces of fabric. I love that idea. Yeah, you could totally do that. Yeah, that's something I plan on doing this year. Um, maybe I'll kick it off, you know, with baseball season or something like that. We'll, um, we'll see about that. Um, Lynn says, no, I'm sewing mine this afternoon. Teresa Ruiz is on too late for me to sew along. I'm just playing catch up. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, Mode apparently has a free form on the temperature quilts, so you can also check that out as well. Um, nice. so all, all, yeah, all wonderful options as well. Um, one or two more quick questions and then we'll be done. Yeah. Um, machine quilt, oh, machine quilting or hand quilting? I machine quilt. So yeah. I, I have a domestic machine on a Q zone frame. And so I do quilting there. I have never tried hand quilting ever. I go. love it. I love to watch people do it. And I'm sure at some point I will maybe do like a small project. You know, just maybe like a little, I don't know, something small, a wall hanging or a quilted pillow top or something and hand quilt it. But um, definitely I love the freedom of free motion quilting. Yeah. And that's something I need, I want to do more of um, so this year. You know, I did some ruler work last week, uh, which everyone enjoyed. And I had a blast doing that. So, and that yeah. gave me so much confidence. You know, to me, the rulers are kind of like um, training wheels yep. for free motion quilting because it kind of gives you a, a guide or those bumper things, you know, that you put down when kids are playing, um, yeah, you know, 10 pin bowl. So. Yeah, that's true. I agree. You okay um, and then um, when you do your basting, do you pin or spray? I am a pin baster. Mm -hmm. um, it's cheap. It's easy. I don't have to pre-plan. My cousin is a spray baster and she swears by it, but uh, I just pin base because it's just, and inexpensive. And when I learned via YouTube, like you did, I mean, they showed you both ways of doing it. And so I thought, well, let me just keep it traditional. So I'm a pen baster. Oh, me too. And um, yeah, because those cans are spray based to what's. Yes. 20. Why are they so expensive? No. And it smells like it's, it's oh. got that chemical it, nasty, you know, smell as well so yeah no not not for yeah. me janet says this has been a great live tonight um uh, i hope everyone else enjoyed it as well but i think that's pretty much it i think we'll go ahead and wrap things up it's been an absolute pleasure having you with us susan um it's been a great conversation it's been a blast having you yeah. and hopefully we'll get to do something again together in the future we'll have to stay in touch and okay. um maybe do like a, a song or maybe come back and do another live um, with some free motion, maybe you can teach me something. Um, wouldn't be hard. Um, and do something like that. So um, if I think I think we're good. I don't see any. Um, okay, Joyce says she's so based with really big hand stitches, and that's an interesting method as well. I haven't tried that yet. But I, yeah, that's true. I've tried that, but when you're free motion quilting, it's it's those stitches get snagged. I can't, so oh, I, can't. I would. Right. Can't, that would be good but for free motion quilting that wasn't a good option for me gotcha all right excellent um janet says she spray based she hates basting and so to spray is quick and easy i think i'm it gonna is. make of uh, the big tables in my office and maybe take quilts in there and 
pin based him during lunch. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Lara said she was late to the party, so didn't catch a lot, sadly. Well, you can always head back if you did hop in late, because I know sometimes people do, because depending on where you are, it can be very, very early. Um, you know, you almost showed up three hours late because you thought that it was going to be later. <laughs> that was so bad. So confused and then i'm like wait a minute and then when you said that i'm like oh my god he's right the time zone is completely different so yeah i would have been late to my own party that's so, all right not a big well see it's easier for me because i i know what time it is back home in australia because they have 16 hours ahead right now and then i work in international shipping so i you know i work with people in the central time zone mountain uk yeah. um yeah. europe so yeah i i know i'm pretty good with times pretty much anywhere once you get me into um like uh the Middle East and that sort of thing, I get a little fuzzy because I don't really deal with that area. But other than that, yeah, Europe, Australia, half of you know, Eastern Asia, I I know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um let's see. Okay. I think we're done. Um, thank you again for everybody that joined us. Do you have Thanks. any videos or anything else coming up that you know about? Say that again. Do you have any videos or anything else planned? I don't have anything planned. I'm just kind of winging it, but I think I'm going to try this whole live scenario and I might do the dog bandanas and we'll see if we can get a pattern put together and share that somehow too. And then we can just do like a little tutorial on it. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah. Good. Definitely let us know, um, put something out and that way anyone that's interested, which I think will be a lot of us because we all have our own dogs and we love them so much. Um, I think you'll get a good crowd to come in. So definitely let us know. And shoot me a message and let me know when you go to do it because I can always put a post out okay. and um, you know promote that for you as well. I'd be more than happy to do that for you. Um, I will have my live, not my live, that's today. Um, my podcast tomorrow as usual. And then, you know, after that, we'll, we'll announce that tomorrow. So definitely check out the um, podcast tomorrow. If you haven't seen the videos from early in the week, definitely check those out as well. And please support Susan. She has a wonderful um, channel. She has um, her Instagram account is wonderful as well. It's what uh, um, drew me out to reach out to her to have her join me as well. And um, if you like it, definitely like and subscribe to her channel if it's something you enjoy. So once again, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you'll have a great day. I hope um, your sewing is wonderful. And I hope that Jack gets to um, hang out in his little cubby wherever he is and not make an appearance on your sewing table today. I hope you'll have a great day and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye. All right, let's see.